What's going on everybody? It's another day to fix the Z, so without any further things to say, let's go ahead and explain what's wrong with it this time. So this time it's the turn signals. Now, whenever I hit the, the indicator, they're not turning on, as you can see up here. You're not hearing the click or anything like that. And also, this the climate control is dead. So from this being dead and those, that's telling me that it's a fuse. However, these aren't working. And if it was the fuse, this is separate. Sorry, there we go. The actual hazards is separate from that fuse. So uh, I think that possibly that fuse blew and it might have popped the flasher relay. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, check those out today. Damn, I got myself shaving. Anyway, yeah, I look like a dick driving right now because I don't have my turn signals. So, uh, sorry everybody. Last thing I need to attract more attention to myself so I get state refed. Yep, let's, we gotta fix this issue. So here we are on the floor well of the driver's side of the Z. And the fuse box we're going for is the one that's right here. All you have to do, just pull it out. Then you have to look right here, find the one we're looking for which is the turn signal fuse, which is right here. And then we have to pull it. So this is the 10 amp fuse that goes in there. It's obviously blown, as you can see. And I went and bought a bunch of new ones here. So we have a five tries to get it to work because obviously this is blowing for a reason. So we have to find out what that reason is. So I just put the new fuse in. Let's see what happens when we turn on the key. All right, we got our climate control back on. Hazards are not working. Turn signals are working now. It's a good thing. However, the hazards aren't. So, what I'm thinking is either that something notorious that's with the Z32s is that the hazard relay switch that's behind here sometimes gets stuck. And sometimes it just goes bad so that's something so we're gonna have to take out this pod here but I still don't know why that fuse is blowing in the first time so I'm gonna keep this turn signal on and see how long it goes and see if it pops or not so it's been on for quite a while and hasn't blown anything which is an excellent sign but the hazards aren't working so I'm actually gonna take out the pod here and uh, in order to do that it's the screws down below here there's two of them right here that you have to unscrew and it should just come right out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that and take off the switch here and uh, run a resistance through it and see how it is. So I took the two screws off and this is what it looks like behind. This is just for the climate controls and the wipers. This right here is the switch that we're after because you can just touch it like that right there. So we're going to go ahead and just take that out here and uh, check its condition. If not, I can always buy a new one of these. They're like, I think like 30 bucks off like Comets or Concept Z performance, stuff like that. But let's go ahead and if we don't have to spend money, we don't have to, let's just test this and just make sure everything's working. All right, now one the thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the actual switch, we're gonna turn it on. So that's how it would be in the car, on if the emergency lights were working. And we're gonna take these and we're gonna touch all the teeth here. And you can see the gauge back here when it will have a continuity. So we're touching this one, touch this in one, nothing. Oh, there's something. Let's see if you guys can see it moving up there. And we got nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and just test this on each single one here and um, see which ones we don't have continuity with in which order because I'm not sure exactly how this is all wired up, so I'm not sure which ones, but I'm just gonna try different patterns and see what we come up with. So me being the dum-dum that I am, I never even checked the fuses for the hazard, and that's it right there, because after testing that hazard switch, it's in perfectly good condition. But at least I know how to take it out. <laughs> but yeah, there's problem number two. Now to find out though still what caused these two to blow? Was it a short? Did something get wet because it was a really dewy morning? Uh, what possibly went wrong? So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this, put the switch back in, and turn everything on and see what happens. 
And so for reference for you guys, just in case you're wondering or if you're suspecting this, the Hazard is on the top row, second in, it's a 10 amp. Just like the turn signal one right here is a 10 amp as well on the bottom row, three in. So as soon as I replaced that fuse, came here and hit the hazard button, and then I immediately heard both the fuses pop down there. Turn signals aren't working again. Um, something is going on down there. There's a short, obviously, somewhere that we have to fix. All right, so I took pretty much the whole steering column apart. I put bigger fuses in for right now, and when I hit left, it turns on, but only the rear passenger light works. The front one doesn't. When I hit right, you hear the clicking, but nothing lights up. That starts flashing. And if I turn on my headlights for the car, you see everything in here flashing. And then you see all the lights in the front of the car flashing except for the actual no the turn signal is actually going brighter than looks like it's okay is it doing it on the other side nope that side's staying the same color with the amber all right so one thing that we got uh discovered on the driver's side here with the turn light was that the uh, wires itself back here were up against the intercooler up here and it could be shorting out on the intercooler it could be doing a lot of things um, however I put in a 20 amp fuse in the hazard lights instead of the uh, 10 amp that is supposed to be there and it popped that one so I'm gonna take this light out see if we can at least get these wires uh, away from the intercooler because that could be causing the short, which would cause all these issues. I didn't film it while I had this light out. However, the actual turn signal bulb, which is this front bulb right here, the housing itself that holds the bulb is against the, the intercooler. And so as it slowly just is moving, it's kind of peeling the wiring back behind this bulb on the fins of the intercooler, possibly more than likely causing the short that what's been happening to cause all this issue. So the passenger side front turn signal here has always been intermittent on and off. It wouldn't work and sometimes it would. This, all this right here is obviously spliced into. This isn't the stock socket that goes into the back of the light. And as much as I would love to buy a new little harness right here, which I can probably do, um, we've pretty much found out the problem is that it's the ground connection that they spliced into right here. It's a little, little iffy. Well, it's all working now because we squished it together, but it would go off and then as soon as we had squished this, it would turn back on. So I'm assuming that it's not held very well. So I think we should uh, cut it open and see what's under there. And of course, as soon as I turn the camera up, it's gone again. But it turned off for a second. This whole housing right here isn't also stock. This was all modified here. So we're just playing with it, trying to isolate if we can salvage this, or if I do just need to go get a new harness here or possibly just a new corner light. So as, as soon as I started undoing all the electrical tape around this connection, that side just fell out of the crimp. And now it's back on. So underneath all that tape that they used, that side was loose so there's something else we can fix by the way chasing all this down having my keys on everything battery died time to recharge it look who wants to come say hi daisy come here pretty dog just got back from the groomer yesterday so we just recrimped the grounding wire here and as he was fiddling with these i saw it flash again real quick but there it was, flashed again. That's nice and tight. And off it went again. So we've also decided that the red one here is also not doing well. So we're gonna open that one up to 
just like before, undo all the tape and check the crimp. So we've decided, screw it, we're gonna go ahead and solder all of them. Just have all new fresh connections, no more crimps, nothing like that. And it's not focusing, but we're gonna go ahead and solder. So we went ahead, trimmed the wires back because we actually found that some of the wires were weak in some places, re-soldered them. Now we're gonna go ahead and re-hook it back up, turn the turn signal back on. Nice and bright, look at that. And there we go, that side has been remedied. Come back over to the passenger side here, take this light back out and add some insulation between the back light here and the intercooler because that's obviously where the short is. And so let's go ahead and get that out. So like I said, the one on the passenger side is not stock. This is actually the stock bulb housing right here and connector. And you can see the black marks right here on the intercooler where it's been rubbing and it's rubbed it raw back here. And I think that that was the problem because this is also the turn signal bulb. So it was shorting out right here, causing those fuses to blow. So normally I'd love to blame KBD on this one, but I don't actually think this is KBD's fault. These are massive intercoolers that obviously sit much further forward than the stock ones. So this one's just a combination of both. If the soldering iron is never getting hot quick enough, just blowtorch it. What we're essentially doing here is trying to get this housing here notched. And we're just using the soldering iron to melt it a little bit so that the wires will actually come out at an angle instead of straight back thus hopefully preventing this scoring right here on the intercooler and protecting the wires. And we are gonna obviously go over this again and wrap it with electrical tape. Not sure if you can, guys can see it on camera, but right here where my thumb is, there's an exposed wire. And that's the exact wire I think that was causing the short. All right, so just finished putting the interior back together here. Um, now, unfortunately, the only problem is right now running the fuses, we have a 25 amp fuse running the turn signals, and then we have a 20 amp fuse running the hazards when they should both be 10 amp fuses, but I ran out of them because as you can see, went through four of them just trying to diagnose everything. Um, so I'm gonna run up and get more of these and we'll throw ahead, go ahead and throw them back in. So I'm fairly certain that that uh, short in the driver's side turn signal front one was the issue all along. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and drive the car, go get four, meh. I'm gonna get probably get a pack of 10, uh, 10 amp fuses. I'd rather have more and not use them than not have enough and need them. So hopefully once I put the 10 amp fuses back in, they'll work. And sorry, San Diego Air Show is going on, so you might hear a lot of jet noise going on. But uh, I'm pretty sure we got it, and I'll let you guys know in a little bit. Went ahead, changed out the fuses, um, got some gas, as you guys can see. California is getting really expensive with gas, and it's only going to be going up for quite a while. So so far, we're all good uh, with the Z. I think we did find it and hopefully it'll continue to work and wow, okay, yeah. Okay, see that's the blown out part, but that's also because the angle I'm holding that. Turn around here will be good, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'm glad that once again, it was something pretty simple to find and hopefully that was it. But uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.